Welcome to Resource Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Welcome to the new subscribers and to all the people that are just passing through. How about considering subscribing to my channel instead of just viewing the contents? I guarantee it's free. Well, the threat meter around the world and even here in the United States is in the red zone. Let's start with Norway first. Apparently, the new uh, race to arms is now in the Arctic Circle. And uh, Norway says we have to up our game by adding extra military bases up there because we do share a border with Russia. And Russia has said we are going to uh, be installing more bases to protect our nuclear subs. Plus, we will now be drilling for minerals, natural gas, off our coast. And if you don't like it, do something about it. So Norway is doing something about it. And they are increasing their military presence up in the Arctic Circle. As well as China is now saying, hey, there's riches to be had. We want some of that. Finland and Sweden see that going on and saying now's the time to step on the gas. Let's get us into NATO or at least have a unilateral agreement. You attack one, you attack us all, even though we are not officially in NATO yet. China, once again, is threatening Japan. Not only are they saying, let's have a party now that Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Abe has been killed, let's have a celebration, and they're giving the Chinese people discounts on specified items that the, you know, government says it's a good way to celebrate his assassination. Also, they are telling Japan, get to, you better get used to seeing more of our warships cruising around your island and get ready. So, the threat meter there is heading into the red. South Korea and the United States once again are having joint military exercises against North Korea potentially because North Korea is saying we will have a nuclear weapon and now we are having a deliverance system with satellite guidance. That threat is extreme red. And uh, Kim Jong-un, the North Korea guy, is saying, you know what, go ahead, tick me off. We'll just send one up and see where it lands and I don't care. Get ready for that, folks. Sri Lanka, a little tiny, tiny nation, is just going up in flames and it is attempting to drag everybody in the vicinity with it. Pakistan is now becoming very unstable and they are a nuclear power. It is starting to spill over into India and surrounding countries and the unrest is growing. Here in the home front, it is just absolutely pathetic. We will not have a country within three more years if at this rate this keeps going. The idiot in chief, the mail order president, is leaving the borders wide open. 250,000 illegal immigrants each month are crossing this border, bringing across them crime, drugs, and other things we don't want to know about, especially with diseases. And Joe Biden is perfectly fine with that. As a matter of fact, he is looking to sign an executive order granting partial amnesty to 250,000 illegal immigrants, specifically Venezuelans, as a goodwill gesture to the dictator down there so that maybe he'll give us a discount on oil prices that we intend to buy from. How pathetic is that? In the meantime, we are sending and draining our emergency oil reserves, specifically for a time of crisis here in the United States. We are sending them overseas, and guess who's in the middle of that? It has been uncovered that Hunter Biden, a broker of the emergency oil sales, is in it up to his eyeballs through one company directly owned and operated by the Chinese, and Hunter Biden is the broker of a billion-dollar deal. 
I guess we're not going to have any justice or inquiry on that, but I guarantee you if it had been Trump, the libertards, the unhinged left, would be foaming at the mouth, screaming at the top of their lungs, it's a conspiracy and we need to indict him. I don't know where the justice has gone in this United States, but again, it's all part of the lawlessness where we're at and what's going on. The commander-in-chief, reading off a teleprompter, read the line again out loud, repeat this line, he's such a fool. But again, he is making veiled threats. And this is the president of the United States, the so-called great unifier, is dividing this country even further by insulting conservatives and Trump supporters, or even people that are anti-abortion, calling them radicals, calling them extremists, calling the Supreme Court delusional, unhinged, wrong-headed. But this is who is running this country now, and it's not him running it. It's Obama, Obama, and Susan Rice, along with the Chief of Staff, Ron Klein. Joe Biden is just a puppet doing this. They're pulling a string and his mouth moves, and he can't even get that right half the time. But the threat meter here in the United States is in the red. We have domestic terrorists imported from the Latin American countries, and they are not here to sing Kumbaya, as we have seen the two people arrested for plotting a mass murder on the 4th of our July. They made bail. They're out and about. Who says they know where they're at now? And I want to end this on one last note. This uh, WNBA player, Griner, who is being held in a Russian jail. I bet you the grass looks a lot greener on the other side. Instead of being here, taking a knee, bad mouth in the United States, saying the national anthem has no place being played anywhere, that we are a bunch of white supremacists, that she will not stand or even show up on the basketball court while our national anthem, home of the brave, land of the free, is being played. She is sitting in a Russian jail, denied all her civil rights that she has grown so accustomed to here in the United States, something that her father fought for in Vietnam. And yet, she has the audacity to say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, please, hey, Somebody there in the United States, hey, Joe, I never voted before, but I'm voting for you. Can you help me out here, buddy? Can you help me out? I was on your side. I was BLM. I was Antifa. I was part of the protest, raising my fist in anger against the United States, denouncing it. But now I'm sitting in here where I have absolutely no rights, and suddenly America is looking pretty good to me. Can you help me out? Can you bring me home? Takes a lot of nerve to say something like that. Maybe she's learned her lesson. I seriously doubt it. But all these people, these all, all these Hollywood movie stars saying, I got to get out of here. Trump's elected. I'm leaving this country. They never do because they know exactly what it is here. It is a great country. And wherever else they want to go to in the world, they will not enjoy the same luxuries that they have here in the United States. You think about that. Welcome to the new subscribers. I appreciate it. Leave your comments. Keep them civil. And in English, please. English. Get yourself right with God. And when I say that, ask for forgiveness each and every day. <laughs> Believe me, I know I have to multiple times a day. And get yourself submerged, baptized in water. In the name of Jesus Christ only. It will change your life. Greg out.